Photographers at the Register Guard and other USA Today Network newspapers captured some amazing photos of the 2023 annular eclipse. And we're sharing our advice if you want to photograph the total solar eclipse on April 8th. The most important thing is to protect your eyes. Looking at the sun with your naked eye is dangerous, but looking through a telescope, binoculars, or a camera without proper filters is even worse. As wonderful as this event promises to be, no picture is worth losing your eyesight for. Please be careful. There are a bunch of inexpensive products available that are made especially for solar photography. Properly rated glasses can be purchased for a few dollars, and camera lens mylar filters can be found for as little as 16. And if all you want to do is capture a picture of the total eclipse when the sun is completely covered, you don't need a filter for your eyes or your camera. But you do need a plan. Equipment. You don't need a ton of expensive gear to shoot the eclipse. A digital camera and just about any lens you have should be fine to capture the scene. But if you want to fill the frame with the eclipse, you will want at least a 200 to a 300 millimeter lens. You might want to consider a tripod. Having the camera in a stationary position will allow you to enjoy the experience when not shooting, and it will make it easier to let friends have a look. A remote shutter uh, trigger is a good idea too, as you won't have to look through the viewfinder the whole time. Most people aren't gonna have a big lens like this. When I went shopping to uh, try to find a filter that would fit over this, I was surprised at how expensive they were. When I actually looked at them, I found out that they really, all they are is a piece of plastic mylar with a uh, surrounding uh, holder. And so I decided to DIY my own. This is a plastic uh, flower pot from Jerry's with some foam core around the outside that I uh, cut and then hot glued to the front of the pot. So it seems to work pretty well. I'm happy with it. For shooting pictures of a partial eclipse, start with your solar filter in place over the front of the lens and set your camera to manual exposure. Auto exposure will likely lead to overexposed images. Assuming clear skies, the sun is a pretty predictable light source. For sun and the phases of the partial eclipse, set your camera ISO to 200, your shutter to 500, and your aperture to 5.6. To be safe, be sure to shoot some tests before the event. You may have to adjust your base exposure for your particular setup. Don't assume that you can look through the camera with your solar glasses on. Whatever you do, put the filter on the front of the lens before you look through your camera. When the sun and the moon reach totality, you will have to work fast. Depending on where you are in the shadow, you will have less than two minutes to get your shots. Increase the ISO of your camera to 400, take off the solar filter, and set your exposure for F8. Shoot a couple of test frames, check your exposure on your LCD, and adjust if necessary. Don't forget that as the sun peeks back out from behind the moon, you will need to put the filter back on your lens and set your camera back to the original settings to capture more images as the sun returns to full view. Don't forget that when the sun peeks back out from behind the moon at the end of totality, you need to get your filter back over your lens and your glasses back over your eyes. Very important not to damage your eyes. A couple of thoughts to wrap up. Based on our tests, I can tell you that pointing a camera directly at the sun will not damage it as long as you use proper filter and shoot still images only. When shooting stills, the mirror and the shutter will cover and protect the sensor when you are not shooting images. I set up a camera with a timer set to shoot images every second for two hours the other day with no damage to the camera. But most camera manufacturers warn against pointing a DSLR or a mirrorless camera directly at the sun using live view. In that mode, the sensor will be exposed to sunlight and heat for as long as you are recording. I have not been able to find anyone who has actually fried their camera, but I don't recommend recording video for more than a few minutes at a time. I was able to shoot a two minute test clip of the sun using a conventional video camcorder with the solar filter in place without damaging the camera. Number two, don't waste your time trying to photograph the partial eclipse with your phone camera. The brightness of the sun will overwhelm the sensor during partial phases, and it probably won't be sensitive enough to do a quality job capturing totality. I'll probably end up eating my words on this because people are gonna send me great pictures with their iPhone later, but uh, you know that, that's my advice. And one final comment. Don't become so obsessed with making photographs that you forget to enjoy this once-in-a-lifetime experience. USA Today Network photographers will be out covering the total eclipse across the country. You can check out the photos throughout the day at usatoday.com.